hello everyone today we have another video brought to you by dana's electrical services and in today's video i will be showing you how to apply to jps for a new meter using the my jps app so we're gonna jump straight into this video remember to like share comment and subscribe it will be greatly appreciated okay let's get into the video and the home screen and the my jps app you're gonna go to services right I want to go to services you're going to go to services and the bottom tabs that you see right there you're going to click services i want to go to services you will see new service stop service upgrade service and transfer service right so let's go on the information tab right there a new service to see what um what kind of information it offers to us this says open a new jps account start here when open a new jps account you will need proof of ownership Signed applicant's letter, requesting service, signed landlord letter, which is optional. Uh, that is applicable once indicated that you are not the property owner. So if you are renting, you need a signed landlord letter. You need a valid government issued IE and the GIE report. And this is optional, only where certification is required. And when we get into the details, I'll let you know when certification is required. So let's, we're going to click on new service, right? When you go on new service, you're going to see the class of new service. You're going to see residential, commercial, and temporary. So our information tab says residential services for residential and small businesses. Commercial tab says service for large businesses. And temporary supplies a service provided for a specific duration of time. So you're going to click on residential services. That's the one. I'm going to show you the example with how to run through. So the type of plan you have prepaid and postpaid. So prepaid is is where JPS allows you to pay as you as you go for electricity and you top up in real time when you need to. Postpaid is the standard um, or the default service that we are used to. We receive a monthly billing for their electrical usage. So that is the standard that we are used to. We will get a bill at the end of the month. We're gonna select postpaid and continue. So I'm just gonna put in some bit of information there. Name, not gonna put in any middle name. You can do that if you like. I'm gonna put in a last name. Um and we're gonna put in a TR number. TR number and a mobile number. okay so for your service address we're gonna put in a random well you won't put in a random address you will put in the address for where you want the new meter so i'm gonna put in an address right here let's say 26 main street main street may pen and the parish is clarendon all right, so direction or landmark. So this is where if there's any notable landmark that they can use to identify where this address is easily, you can give that at this point or you can give them direction from a general location. So let me just say, um, I'm just going to say across from clock. Just putting in some random stuff here for demonstration purposes. Now they're going to ask you some question. Are you the owner of the property? Yes uh is is mailing address is different from service address uh let me just say yes All right so it's gonna ask me to put in the mailing address here so i'm just gonna put in a different mailing address so let me say um 28 28 um aluminum way just put in random stuff aluminum way Mineral ice. And the parish is still clearing down. Right? That is because I say my mailing address is different from the service address. And again, the service address is where we want the new meter. So, and there's another question say, is there a meter at the service address? We're going to say no. Right? If, there, if I said yes, it would ask me for a meter number right 
it would ask me for a meter number. I can still say yes and throw in a random meter number 5648 just throw in some random numbers. Um also if I if when they ask if I'm the owner of the property, if I had said no, it would ask me for a uh, additional document which is um we all we, we speak on that a little before. That is the proof of the let that is the letter from the landlord. If I had said I am not the owner of the property, it had it would have asked me for the document um that says um it would be a signed letter from the landlord. Right? I'm just gonna say yes. And we're gonna continue. When I continue, it gives you a summary. So the service type, which is new service. If I need to change something there, I'll just go back and change it. Applicants information. So you have my name right there. You have my TRN number and you have my mobile number. And the service address right there. And also my mailing address right there. You can edit if you want to change it. You can edit. You can go back and edit. So we'll just continue. And now we are at the document section. So you're going to see proof of ownership. Okay, so for the proof of ownership, you can use either a land title, a property tax receipt, or a letter from a lawyer. Right? So that is for the proof of ownership. Right? For, by the way, you can, you can upload either pictures or PDF. Right? Sometimes I find it easier to upload pictures than PDF. So you'll click on this link, this um that right there. I don't want to click on it because if I click on it, it's gonna show some of my personal files. But you're gonna click on that. By the way, guys, if you can use a smartphone, this process, this entire process, it will be very easy, right? But if you are not so good at using a smartphone, it's going to be well. I don't want to say very technical, but kind of technical, right? I don't want to use the judgment based off of me being within my field where, yes, this is what I deal with, so I'm very technical. I don't want to use myself to judge it, but um, it's not, it's not that very technical, right? It's the average, the average person who can use a smartphone can maneuver this and, and um, go through this procedure relatively easy. So... After the proof of ownership, it asks for a sign. It asks for, yep, it asks for a signed application letter, right? So the sign sign letter indicating driving direction, meter, or custom and premises number, right? And I'm going to show you an example of what the signed application letter looks like okay this is the example of our signed application letter as i said this is just an example this is like a simple format this doesn't even include any direction or um premises or customer number but it works so at top right we have the address there oh well my name and service address right there and to the left we have the jps address the same way we would write a standard letter and then i have uh dear sir madam i danai chambers is here by writing this letter to apply for a new meter at my premises located at 26 main street maple and clarendon yours sincerely and i have a line right there and i'll just print that write my signature on it um take a picture of it scan it whatever and then upload it um then upload this document where I, I see sign application letter. If there, if you are someone who can election, election, electronically add your signature, you can do that as well. Um, works just the same. Um, in addition to have to this, what I have right here, which is I Danai Chambers is here by writing this letter to apply for a new meter at my premises located at 26 Main Street, Maple Clarendon. If you want to give direction, you can also go further and say. You can go further and say you can find these premises by whatever, whatever. Give the direction. If uh, there is already a meter there, 
you can add the premises number or the customer number i also have a video on how to find premises number customer number and meter number um yeah there's a video on that i will link that below in the description as well as if i remember i'll just make it pop up on the screen right now yep so yeah that's that okay so the next document that we'll need is a valid government id and this can either be a driver's license a passport or a not <laughs> or a national identification right the next document very important and the most important of all is the ger compliance certificate right and this is a and this is applicable if the building is new premises that has been without electricity for at least one year premises that has been demolished and reconstructed premises that has been damaged by fire premises with an illegal connection um are you required an upgrade in supply right okay so when the inspector inspect your premises and it is passed this certificate that you'll get is what you'll upload here the ger compliance certificate very important and then we have additional document right here so any other supporting document for the application so any other application any other document that you that you think they'll need for for them to process this application you'll just submit it right there and that's it then you'll click submit right i don't complete everything so it's going to tell me that these things that is that that is needed for instance the valid government id the signed application letter the proof of ownership is going to tell me that i don't upload those so it's not going to allow me to submit but the good thing about it is you can save and exit and come back another time and continue this application so let me save and exit and that's done right to track this so if let's say let's say you want to continue your application or you want to check the status of your application you'll go to customer support right and from customer support you'll go to track my request and report right so this is what we just created so this one that is what we just created right so th that's it that is it right there new service and the application number my name um the day that the application was done and it is saying draft because it is not completed right so when you submit it you'll see the status right here and if i actually submitted this i could click on it and then i could track the status right for instance i have one right here this one says incomplete because one of the documents i this is one that i actually submitted for someone right but this one the status is incomplete because there's an issue with the proof of ownership so the status came back as incomplete so i would have to um go back to it and then resubmit the document so you'll see the status right where you see draft or where you see incomplete right and that is it guys after you submit it you just wait on the status and then they'll contact you from there right so that is it that is how you apply to jps for a new meter using the my jps app so thank you for watching this video guys so for similar videos like these please feel free to subscribe to my channel dana is electrical services thank you